So welcome back to day two of our preview of the Dublin Racing Festival. Danny Mullins is alongside me. He's got a, an excellent book of rides and they start it in the opener where it's a, a family affair, Danny. It's the Panny Mullins Mayor's Handicap Hurdle and you'll be hoping to keep this one in the family. Yeah, definitely. The, the Paddy Mullins Mayor's Handicap is definitely a race I'd love to win. It's interesting enough, it's probably the only race Willie hasn't won at the Dublin Festival and he's not going to win it this year as well because he doesn't have a runner. So I'd love to get my name uh, on the roll of honour for this one. It's uh, just, I suppose, family sentiment. And I ride Bantown Girl here for Sonny Carey. She may be disappointed a little bit the last day in Fairy House, but her second last run where she was third in a listed race, but five lengths behind Party Central and Punchestown, puts her in here with a decent each way chance. You know, she's she's only got 10-6, I think, here. So off a lightweight. And, you know, trip might be a little on the short side, but a handicap will be a truly run race. I, I give her an each way chance. But looking to the head of the market, it's still a very competitive race. Party Central is most likely to start favourite. She's been very good, you know. Her last couple of runs may be disappointed a little bit in Down Royal, but won nicely in the stall and came out again in Punchestown to back it up with a, a nice win in a listed race. The others with some handicap form are Brides Hill, who won very well in Leopardstown at Christmas, jumped out, made all and absolutely bolted up. Got £14 for that, but when you look back at the race, you think he deserved £14 and she can maybe back it up here, although 11 stone 12 is, is difficult to carry. There's a reason she's got that weight. Glan is probably the one, I think, of the shorter price that's most likely to win. She was second the last day in a competitive handicap in Fairy House. And if she can just brush up a little bit through the middle part of the race with her jumping and that, I, I think uh, she'll take a bit of beating here. Mark Walsh, JP McManus and Gordon Elliott team. Excellent. Hopefully you can fly the flag for the, for the Mullins camp. And we'll go on to the second race, obviously, the uh, the grade one Ladbrokes novice chase. This is one where all eyes will be on Galloping Deschamps. I'm presuming you've been seeing a bit of him at home in the last few weeks. How has he been going? And will he uh, bolt up as expected here? Yeah, he's in great shape at home. And the most likely thing is that he is going to win. But... You know, he, he won very, very impressively in Leopardstown at Christmas. But the second horse that day, he ran well in Navin, but still got beat. He got collared late on. So just didn't really make the form stand out that far for me. And I think while he's the most likely winner of the race and probably the most high class horse in it, I think there's value elsewhere from a betting point of view. I think Fury Road was solid at Christmas. He won the grade one over three miles, drops back to 2-5 here. Master McShee got up late to win in Limerick on heavy ground. Things will maybe be a little bit sharper for him around Leopardstown on better ground. But the one I like is Capadano, again for Mark Walsh. He won in Nace. He won a beginner's chase. His first run over fences got up late to win. But... His last run is the one that maybe impresses me a little bit more. He was four and three quarter lengths behind Bob Ollinger. And on the Nace run, he was three quarters of a length in front of Galliard de Menil. He was 27 lengths in front of Galliard de Menil in Punchestown. So it was a big step forward for him. And being second to Bob Ollinger is probably the strongest line of form you have coming in here. I would say maybe it's arguably stronger than Gallop and the Champs win, although it was very impressive in Leopardstown at Christmas. I'd have to side with Capadano here. What's your thoughts on Galliard de Menil? He's been, when I was having a look early this afternoon, a popular pick within the 10 to follow game. A lot of people have got him, not, not loads, but he's one of the in the top five picks in terms of what's running uh, on the Sunday at Leopardstown. So he hasn't quite got it to winning ways so far this season, but is there a chance he could get involved in this? Uh, definitely. You know, he's a class horse, but what he's achieved so far over fences, he just needs to really improve on that. He hasn't hit the heights that he hit over hurdles, you know, second to Bob Ollinger last year in Cheltenham and went back and won his grade one in Punchestown over hurdles. But you'd forgive him his first run in Nace, but there's a question mark as to why he couldn't be involved with Bob Ollinger 
in Punchestown the last day. And I think if Capadano runs true to form on that race, uh, Capadano will have him well covered and could put it up to Gallop and the Champ here. Excellent. Another popular pick is in the Dublin Chase, another grade one in Chacon Fossoir, who's who was uh, fifth on his last start, uh, but he's has been something of a superstar, and this is very much his race, and especially in the uh, the Rich Richie colours that have won this race for the last few years. Yeah, Rich has a great record in this race here, and I'm sure he'd love to win it again. I think he will. He obviously has to reverse form with Grenatine from the Tingle Creek and Sandown, but Shaq on a couple of times, if you get back to his hilly way chase back in 2020, he wasn't that impressive that day. You know, he, he might have only beat cash back four or five lengths that day before going on to be very impressive in Leperstown at Christmas and win this race before Cheltenham as well. Now, I suppose it was a disappointment that he missed Leperstown at Christmas, but everything has been good with him and everyone seems to be happy at home since then. So I think normal service should resume here. Grenatine sets a good standard coming over from England and credit to Paul Nichols for coming over here with a couple at the weekend and having a go. But I think Shaq and Porsois loves Leperstown, jumps well. He's a class horse in the race. For me, he's going to take all the beating. And you ride cash back in this. Obviously, you won on him last time and beat Classic Getaway that day. He's been out again and, and won since. So you must think that's a bit of a, a frank form, a form franked anyway, going into the, the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Cashback on his day is a very good horse. I was beaten maybe a half length in an Irish Arkle a couple of years ago around Leperstown, so he likes it around here. He's had his jumping issues since then, but had a nice confidence booster when fourth to Energamine in the Hilly Way back in December down in Cork and won nicely, as he said, in Clonmel, where Classic Getaway came out and franked that form. You know, at bigger prices, it could be a nice each way bet here if some of the more fancied ones really try and cut Shaq and Porsois' throat. And the last day, what I liked about uh, Cashback was they settled a lot better early in the race. And that might leave a few more options as to tactics uh, and how he might be ridden. Exactly. So maybe one to, to firm up in the play spot with Shaq and if he is the favourite on the day. So we'll, we'll move on to the to the handicap chase, the 225. As always with these Leopardstown handicaps, especially at the Dublin Racing Festival, there's, there's lots to go out and lots of little ways you can pick around uh, what you fancy in the race. You don't have a ride in this one, but I imagine you'll be cheering on the, the Willie Mullins camp who likely to have the favourite with Black Bow. Yeah, Black Bow, yeah, he sets a fair standard here. He was second in the Dan Moore chase in Fairy House last time out. Probably looked like the winner and maybe just took a blow at the back of the last Dunvegan. Obviously runs in the previous race takes on Shaq and Porsois, and that'll give you a good indication as to how strong that form was. But Black Bow has course form, was third behind Energamine in the Arkel here, the day I rode him last year, and is definitely a, a high class horse. I think he's still a little bit unexposed. He's off 156, it's fairly high, but I think while he's in handicap company, I think there's a bit more to come from him and then see how he makes it integrated company. Birchdale just got tired, I think, in Leperstown over Christmas. He ran in the Paddy Power, led all the way down over the last and just seemed to flatten out. He's beat eight length or eight and a half lengths that day. And I think dropping back to 2-5 will definitely suit him. Looking through his form, the best of it seems to come around two and a half miles. Some of his worst runs were over three miles, but you know they had their go in the paddy power. It nearly worked out, but this could be the race where he gets back on track. Another one I like in it is the shunter, another one for the McManus team. He was fourth the last day in Galway, the Galway Plate, and... I think Leperstown is definitely going to suit the shunter a lot better. Galway is a tricky round of jumping. He just got caught out at a few fences where they're just turning and coming at him a bit quicker. Leopardstown is only one fence from the three furlong marker. Your second last is a long way down. There's one fence in the straight. I think uh, if he can get into a nice rhythm jumping down the back, he's a high-class horse to shunter and maybe has a bit more to offer. Exactly, it's definitely an interesting race for the, the JP McManus horses and one we haven't mentioned there, Manila Times, who obviously 
won the Grand National, is in this, will be well handicapped and carries a lot of weight, but you can never rule out, I suppose, a former Grand National winner who did it as well as he did, really. No, you can never rule them out. You know, you need to be a high-class horse to, to win a Grand National, but I just don't know if there's going to be enough rain for him, you know, the Grand National that extended four four mile two trip um, it really seemed to suit him where leopardstown you know their water and the track to provide safe ground but i just don't think it's going to be enough of a stamina test for him but he could be on a fuse each way bets for people here we'll get stuck into the to the irish champion hurdle now we won't talk all day about honeysuckle we all know how good she is i think more than 70 percent of the 10 to follow stables have got her included so maybe we can Try and find some. That is a bonus race, the, the Irish Champion Hurdle. So you get a few extra points for coming second. So there's only five runners in it, Danny. You ride Heaven Help Us. Could that be the one that follows Honeysuckle home? Yeah, I ride Heaven Help Us here. Yeah, she's, she's a big outsider. This trip is probably on the short side for her. You know, Paul Hennessy just didn't want to lump top weight in the Mayor's Handicap before Cheltenham. So... This is a, a real trial for the Mayor's race in Cheltenham for her. Hopefully it'll keep her good and sharp. But, you know, there's a few there's a few decent ones in here that meet her a, a good bit better on ratings. I think San Roy is the one who could be most likely to finish second. He was third behind Sharjah and Zanahir was second that day. Sanroy needs to make up four and a half lengths, but I think if he settles better in the early part of the race, he has a good chance of reversing form with Zanahir and can be second to Honeysuckle. I, I, as you say, I, I don't think anything can beat her if she brings up her A game, but Sanroy can settle. Zanahir, I'm sure, will jump out to make it a, a good gallop again. It was a strongly run race here at Christmas where he finished second. And I think that level of form brought out an awful lot more compared to the Morgiana hurdle where they went a bit steady and Sharjah Shard, beat him at his ease. The percent right is to, to try and follow on Honeysuckle. We'll go on to the to the novice hurdle, the, the grade one there over two miles. It'll sort of give us some indication for the Supreme and stuff going forward. So Gerhard is the favourite for that race. And I think a lot of that will be down to what he's obviously done on the track. But I think uh, Ruby Walsh, who you know, Plenty well, Danny had said that he was a bit of a plane when he'd sat on him at, at home and done a bit of schooling with him. So, one of you had a sit on him, and do you agree with what Ruby says? No, I haven't had a sit on him, but I've seen plenty of him, and he's well able to gallop. You know, that's that's no new, nothing new to be saying about Sir Gerard, but you know, he he looks to be very very good. The only thing, I suppose, looking for maybe holes in him is that. In Leperstown at Christmas, a bit of his jumping down the back straight, just a little bit slow at a few hurdles, but you're watching him then, and he jumped the second last well, went down to the last, was a little bit tight, and was very fast at it. So it just proved he's learning very quick, and he's just got a high level of intelligence, and I think he's the most likely winner of this race. And you're looking through some of the others who maybe have a bit more experience, which will make Sir Gerard work hard, but Tree Stripe Life was second to Mighty Potter in the grade one here at Christmas. Missed the second last that day. Lost three or four lengths at a crucial point of the race, but had his chance to go and beat Mighty Potter at the back of the last and just flattened out a little bit from there home. I think, you know, he'll, he'll run a decent race. My mate Mozzie and Statuaire, their form ties in nicely from the Royal Bond. My mate Mozzie got under the last that day, Statuaire flew it and got up on the line to beat him. You know, there's very little between them. And Colonel Mustard for Lorna Fowler runs here too, who is a very good second to John Bond in Ascot. And he has six runs over hurdles and might be one to use that experience to, to find out the inexperience of the likes of Sir Gerard. You know, on ratings, my mate Mozzie, Statuaire, Colonel Mustard, Tree Stripe Life, they're all very closely matched. Sir Gerard is all potential, needs to improve from that Christmas run. Looking back at his bumper form is very likely to do that. But, you know, it's, it's going to be a competitive race. Sir Gerard, most likely winner. If I'm thinking of one to put up against them, I think Statuaire, 
her jumping is just so slick. She she was very fast. It won her the race in Fairy House in the Royal Bond. And I hope, you know, she she can put it up to Sir Gerard getting the seven pounds allowance. Excellent. There's definitely some value to be had in that race, it looks like. Whether you're with Sir Gerhard or you're against him, you can at least play in the place market and have a go against him. We'll move on to another handicap, which is the, the 410. Again, another one where you'll get plenty of value. Uh, and you ride one, Danny, for, for Emmett Mullins here as well, who's quite well fancied. Yes, I ride uh, Carrera for Emmett here, runs in my granny's colours, and it'd be fantastic to ride a, a winner for granny on, on a day like it, where, where the, the Paddy Mullins hurdle is also the first race in the car, that she'll be very excited heading racing on Sunday. Uh, Correa, I was second on him in Fairy House, and over two and a half miles, maybe just didn't jump sharp enough through the middle part of the race to hold his ground. Looked like he might get there at the back of the last and just flattened out a little bit the last 100 yards. Backed it up with a nice run in Lingfield on their meeting, their good meeting there two weeks ago. And that was better, but still missed the third last and was a bit slow from the last home or at the last and just flattened out from their home. I think he needs to sharpen up a little bit, but with that experience under his belt and in here off 10 stone one, you'd have to give him a big chance of winning the race. Getting down through some of the other ones, it's a very competitive handicap, but one that I like here is C. Ducker for Dunham Isler and Arthur Moore. Maybe a little bit disappointing, but it was only his comeback run behind Brides Hill here in Leperstown at Christmas. Hadn't run since June uh, earlier that summer. It was beaten 19 lengths, but you're getting back through his earlier form in that novice hurdle in Goran back in November uh, 20. Gallop on the champ, he beat him a half length and then was second in Leperstown, the handicap behind Master Max Shee. Master Max Shee, grade one chaser, Gallop and the Champ might be a grade one chaser and is a grade one hurdler. That form to me looks fairly strong for C. Ducker in here off a mark of 133. He's potentially the, the best handicapped horse in the race. Just back to your ride, obviously only carries 10 stone one, I imagine. That means you'll be uh, having a, a small breakfast on Sunday morning anyway. <laughs> It'll be a light enough breakfast, yeah. I'd say a cup of coffee might do me Sunday morning. Exactly. Hopefully, it'll be uh, it'll be worth it. So, onto the the last one, the uh, the mayor's the mayor's bumper that is always one where, like we were saying before, the the mayors are trying to get black type by winning what is a Grade Two event. Pink in the Park is the favourite one on his uh, on her debut. Sorry, and uh, we'll be hopeful of going in again. Looking at the the early betting, anyways, is well fancied. Yeah, definitely. You know, she she seems like a fair rocket to go at home. Was very impressive in Leopardstown or in Listowel, sorry, the last day. And yeah, it's most likely from what I've seen of her in Willies that it's it's going to be one way traffic for her here. She she looks very very good. Now her Monia maker for Jamie Codd and Gordon Elliott was also impressive in Punchestown when beaten Carrig Morna Queen, but that was on heavy ground. Be interesting to see how she can handle it a little bit quicker ground here in Leopardstown. And there's a few others. Willie runs an army of them in this race. Ava Grace was very impressive in Thorless. Jody Townend won there that day, renews the partnership with her here. And Gordon Elliott also has Liberty Dance, who was quite impressive in fairy house seven and a half lengths in front of claire mack but when you look at that form uh tied in with harmonia maker she absolutely trounced claire mack so you'd have to think harmonia maker is definitely the number one from the gordon elliott stable some of the others going down through them i think possibly at a bigger price high stranger is worth a few quid each way here for john Gleason, and john kiley he she was a nicely nice impressive winner in Limerick earlier in the summer backed that up by winning very impressively in Down Royal and was second in a listed race around Goran 
has had a bit of time off since then, but John Kiley would be a master at priming one for the day. And I'm sure when he was giving her the break after Gorn, he had this race in mind. I think she's the, the most likely one at a bigger price to hit the frame. Excellent stuff, Danny. It's going to be a, a brilliant weekend of racing. Uh, how is it at Leopardstown? Obviously, you're there now, ready for racing TV duties tonight. How, how is the track looking from, from where you've seen it from today? Yeah, it looks to be in great shape. They've got plenty of water on it, which should provide plenty of safe ground. You know, Leopardstown have been hit by the dry winters. And, you know, in fairness, them, they're being proactive and getting the water on to, to provide safe ground for all the good horses that are going to be going from here on to Cheltenham and the other big, big spring festivals. So, you know, credit to them. And hopefully we're looking forward to a big weekend's racing.